Hello, 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 Scorpio. Scorpio, this is Adrian Obi, Capricorn Tigris of Astrology, a look inside. And I'm coming to you with your astrological forecast for the month of November of 2019. Happy November, Scorpios. And guess what? Today, the full moon is in Scorpio. The date is October 27th. So it is a new, uh, almost like a new day, a birthday for you guys. So happy new moon to Scorpio. Happy new year to Scorpio, the new moon of Scorpio. And here's the thing. Over the next few weeks, there's going to be a lot of emphasis in Scorpio. So I feel like a lot of Scorpios are going to have some attention on them over the next few weeks. People might be looking at more of what you've been up to, what you're doing, what you're wearing, what you're saying, where you're going, who you're seeing. And you might feel like, wow, there's a lot of attention on me suddenly. People care about what I'm doing all of a sudden. And it's just because there's emphasis in Scorpio. We've got Mercury in Scorpio. We've got uh, Venus uh, in Scorpio. We've got the sun in Scorpio. We've got the new moon in Scorpio. I mean, it's a lot of Scorpio, okay? There's a lot of Scorpio. And so, uh, you know, just be aware of that. There's going to be a lot of emphasis on you. And it's, you might feel like it's hard to hide because it is. Now, Mars is going to be in the 12th house in Libra. It's been there for a while. And so you guys might be secretly feeling that urge and desire to hide and that's where the issue comes in because if you're trying to hide when the, the sun and venus and mercury and the new moon and everything is you know accentuating your first house it's just not the time for it so you know you put on your big girl pennies and your big boy boots and you know face the sun face the sunlight it's your time to shine and it's the beginning of your new year and so I hope you guys all take advantage of that and take advantage of the power that is, been, is being bestowed upon you right now. It's, it's your time, Scorpio. So please be aware of that so that you can take full advantage of the opportunities that might exist for you now. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that on the second, Venus is going to be moving from your first house into your second house of money. And that, oh my goodness, Scorpio, that's a very good place to have Venus. Because first of all, Venus is the natural ruler of the second house because that's the natural house of Taurus. And so when Venus is back there in that second house and, and Jupiter is in its own sign of, of Sagittarius, the goodness and positivity and beneficial aspects are overwhelming. I can't even put into words what is possible for many Scorpios during this time. You are capable of achieving a great deal during this time and just know it's all centered literally around you. So it's like you're bringing the fire, you're bringing the power, you're bringing the ideas, you're, you're bringing the success into your life. And um, I, I just hope that you use that Sagittarius, Venus, and Jupiter in a positive way for your finances and for your, you know, what you own and what you possess and what you, you know, what you have to give. And I just don't want to see you blow it away. That's all I'm saying. Because it would be easy, uh, you know, with uh, these planets in Sag just to party it away. I can see you holding like a, a great big party or something and, and blowing like 10, 20 gram. People do crazy things like that when Venus and Jupiter are conjunct or together. And we're talking Sag here. This is a, a, a sign that knows no limits if given the opportunity. And Venus is the same way, knows no limits if given the opportunity. And Jupiter, same way, knows no limits if given the opportunity. Now, when I look at this in the side, in the way, because it's in the house of money, I mean, if you were to stumble onto something that could earn you a great deal of money, if you were aware of it at that time and could harness it, you could make unearned, I mean, untold amounts of money because it knows no limits. No limits. No limit, baby. Put that song. Mm -mm, usher, no limit, no limit, baby, no limits. Okay, um, let's see. 
uh, you got Kappa. Now there is one limiting. There is one limiting. Wherever Saturn is, it's always limiting something. In my case, it's sitting on my sun. So, you know, I know what that feels like. In your case, Saturn and Pluto are in your third house of communication, Scorpio. So you guys may feel like uh, when you're communicating, you might feel like you have to hold back or that, um, that like you might feel like you're not able to say everything. Or you might feel like when you're saying it, people aren't getting it. Or you might feel like you're being restricted from saying it. Or you might feel like when you're saying it, people are interrupting you. I mean, it's something like that. It's something like that going on. Um, Pluto is there too, and they're both direct now. So it could be that um, it could be that other people have been doing this to you. I mean, yeah. Now the North Node is in the ninth house, which is on the opposite side. So, I mean, it, it's asking you to see the bigger picture of everything because the ninth house is the world, basically the big picture of life, the philosophy, and religion, and you know, just everything. So I, you're, you're being asked to look at things through kind and caring and nurturing eyes. I just would be cautious that with Pluto and Saturn together in the communication house that you're not communicating in a stern or a harsh or authoritarian way if that makes sense. You might even be in a position of authority, but I mean, it's just about not, you know, wielding the authority to that point, at least verbally, verbally. Uh, let's see, uh, Neptune is in the fifth house, so there could be some confusion over romance. I think I've talked to you guys about the romance confusion with Neptune in the, in the fifth house. Um, as long as you guys have a handle on that, you're working on it, that's great. I, it could mean like everlasting love. Neptune is love. It's the higher octave, octave of Venus. And so a lot of people forget that, that where there's Neptune, there is love. So there's love. Uh, it, it might be retrograding, but it's in your, um, in your fifth house of love. Now this uh, Neptune in the fifth house, it could and also indicate an inability to face the truth about your children. I don't know if there's something going on with your children or something like that, but Neptune there, it kind of just talks about the inability to see the faults of our children. I mean, even if they were to do something horrible, you wouldn't see it because, well, Neptune's there. You love them. You love your kids. Kids can do no wrong. You know, they can lie right in your face. You wouldn't see it. <laughs> You just couldn't right now, I don't think. So you, know, you might say differently. You're like, I know when they're lying, I know when they're this, I know, no, it's Neptune's there. I'm telling you, they pull a wool over your eyes. It also could be a time where you might, um, I, I mean, I don't know why I'm getting this vibe, but like some people might have mistaken pregnancies or they might have a pregnancy and then lose um, the child or something of that nature. I, I hate saying that, so you know, I'm gonna move on. Um, but Chiron is in the sixth house in Aries, which is the health. And so that is an uh, area of, you know, concern is the health. But the good thing is Chiron heals where it goes. And so I believe it's going to be healing the area of health, even if it's painful, even if you have to face something that you really didn't want to face. But it heals that. Now, it also rules work. So it could be that you're healing your work life as well. Okay, and it could be some pain or some hidden sadness about your work, but you're healing it. You can heal it now. Um, lastly, that full moon is going to be in the seventh house. It's, you know, Uranus is there too. Uranus is a little crazy, as you know. <laughs> and your, your partnerships, like your marriage or your uh, significant partner, things might have been up and going crazy, like topsy-turvy all around the place. Uh, lately, you might, you guys might be really feeling that. And, um, you know, this is going to be a time when with the full moon here, that might all come out to the surface, whatever craziness is happening is all going to come out and you're going to be able to see it and talk about it and, and get it worked on. 
Also, you know, after uh, the 22nd, I believe it is, uh, or the 20th, this, the sun goes into Sagittarius. We're going to have a lot of Sag. Yeah, the sun goes into it on the 22nd. Mercury goes direct on the 20th. And uh, Mars goes into Scorpio on the 18th. And so, you know, and then there's going to be a new moon in Sag on the 26th. So I'm going to come back in uh, mid-November and do another reading for you guys so that I can cover what's going on at the end of September with that new moon in Sagittarius. But for now, and I want you to deal with the fact that the new moon is in Scorpio as of today on your sun and is emphasizing you, Scorpios, you. And then on the 12th, that full moon is going to be in Taurus, and that's going to be in your seventh house, and that's going to be emphasizing your partnerships, your marriage, and your partner, your significant other, whoever that is, okay? It could also indicate or that you have to deal with enemies. I think with Chiron and Aries in the sixth house, and the full moon in the seventh, it is possible that you could be dealing with enemies from, say, work, okay? Do keep that in mind. That is a possibility. So Scorpio, this has been my reading for you for now and over the next couple of weeks. Just remember that over the next few weeks, the emphasis is going to be in Scorpio until it gets into that full moon in Taurus. So be aware that, you know, all eyes are on you pretty much. Okay. All right, you guys. Much love and much light to all the Scorpios out there. May you make your money this month and get you know, get whatever it is you want out of that beautiful Venus and Jupiter in the second house in Sag. How lovely for you guys. Much love and light to you. Oh, and don't forget to like and share our videos. Like and share this video. And be sure to subscribe to the channel and be sure to hit that little bell because when you do, then that means you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video, especially videos like this for Scorpios. Okay? Much love and light to you, Scorpio. Blessings to you all. Bye now. Namaste.